Well, that's great. The Canucks hired another suit, another lawyer, slash agent, slash director of hockey operations. They bumped up Mike Penny, the ex-head scout, to director of player personnel. That should make you run out and buy season's tickets. That was sure worth calling a press conference for. What are they going to do when they trade for a big, strong center? Rent City Hall? The only press conference the Canucks should call is when they make a big trade or either sign Kirk McLean and or Gerald Diddick. Hiring a pencil pusher is hardly earth-shattering news. At least Pat Quinn could have added some life to it by announcing the obvious that he's going to stay on his coach. He says that decision won't be made for a couple of days. Are you trying to tell me that Pat Quinn, six weeks before training camp, hasn't decided if he will coach or not? There's an offer out to Tom Fergus. That's taking second best. They weren't interested in him if Larionoff had a stayed here. Now that he's gone, they're taking someone that has less to offer. The Canucks have got some major holes to fill. They're going to have a tough time even coming close to last season's point total. Wake me when they do something that matters. Neil McRae for Panagopoulos. We're getting people into BC Place next Thursday. It's not that the Dome is not a great joint to go to, it's just what it holds. And right now, that's an awful football team. I don't buy the theory that you owe it to the BC Lions to support them. First of all, they have got to earn your support. And secondly, this is no longer a community-owned football team. This is big business. There's no difference in going to a restaurant. If you get food poisoning, you don't like it, are you going to go back? Do you owe it to them to go back? The bottom line is this football team does not have the talent. They did an awful job recruiting. Ray Alexander was kicked out basically the day that training camp started. They still haven't replaced him. They lost Jay Christensen over $25,000. Are you trying to tell me that his size wouldn't help right now? The BC Lions are going to have to do a bigger recruiting job mid-season than most teams did in the off-season. I just don't see any sign as to why they are going to all of a sudden get better. And you look around the league. Who is it that they are capable of beating? You know, looking at how things are going, why do I have this feeling that Joe Cap is still calling the shots? Neil McRae for Panagopoulos with tonight's sports comment. For those not watching studs right now, good for you. As the ad says, just do it. Why watch people talk about it? A former bodyguard of Mr. Swaven de Boner, Mike Tyson, says that Tyson used to have sex with up to 15 different women in a day. That he would keep their names in a computer along with their sexual preferences. Presumably that means they like sex with or without Don Dumphy giving blow-by-blow -blow description. First of all, I find it hard to believe that Tyson knows how to use a computer. And since when did Tyson ever take into account a woman's preference? I personally think the greatest gift to entertainment that Tyson could give this world would be to have a bed off with Wilt Chamberlain. We now know what a misnomer it is to call him Wilt the Stilt. Not a good choice of words. Not when he lays claims to boinking 16,000 women. Mind you, what an unfair advantage he has over Tyson. It's tough for Mikey to get dates with a female persuasion living where he is. Can't live up to his daily batting average. 15 different women, 15 different ways. Watch out, Baskin Robbins. Neil McRae for Panagopoulos. If a $20 stogie, play with a silk tie, rev up the beamer and go for a drive and try and figure out what Cliff Ronning is worth to you. Their initial offer was roughly 350 grand. Ronning wants about 750,000. He made 165,000 last year. What value do you put on your number one center? And if Ronning isn't number one, who is? Peter Nedved? To look at Ronning is to ask the inevitable question. Can the guy play 80 games? Yes, he can. Can he score big goals? He led the team in goals in the last two playoffs, 14 goals, 19 games. But he's too small for this league. Okay, then how come the Canucks traded to get him? The Canucks will say, how can we go from 165,000 to close to 800 in one jump? Well, they did that and more with Trevor Linden. Ronning has kept quiet. He's played the negotiating game fair and square. He's a local kid that's done well, has done anything and everything the Canucks have asked, but teams keep wanting to pay him what they think his size is worth. If Dave Babich is worth 500,000, why isn't Ronning worth 750? It's a tough call for Quinn to make, but it's time Cliff Ronning played hardball and got what he's worth on today's market. Neil McRae for Panagopoulos. Pablo Bilovich to make a tough decision for Lou Pisaglia. Most athletes have to be told when it's time to go. And Lou Pisaglia should let go as far as kicking field goals. He's had a tremendous career. Anyone who has played football has got to be envious of what Pisaglia has done. But let's face it, time has caught up with him. The leg that used to kick the sure field goals from 45-50 is gone. 
And any time you get down around the 40, you've got to be guaranteed you're going to get a field goal. Last night, Dave Ridgway kicked a 43-yarder to force overtime. Basaglia missed his. Let's face it, at 0-6, the Lions are virtually out of the playoffs. What better time to make the transition to Wayne Lamley? Keep Pasaglia, let him work with Langley, and try and teach him to try and be as good as Pasaglia was, if that's at all possible. He is a tremendous guy, has had a great career, and it's something that is awfully tough to admit to. But Lou Pasaglia has done so much, I don't like seeing him miss the field goals that he should be making. Yes, it indeed is a giant night that turns out a bit gross. I'm Paul Crane. And I'm Van Orr.